Hey friends and followers, welcome back. As you can see behind me, things are different. Um, no longer am I facing one direction, I am now facing the complete opposite direction. Uh, makes for a more interesting background. There are some fun things to look at, so please feel free to listen and look as well. Uh, today I would like to talk about art and specifically making a career out of or with art. Um, it's not something that can be done easily. It's not something that should be taken lightly and it's definitely not something that everybody can do and be successful at. There are different levels in which you can be successful, um, but with especially freelance art, it's like pouring yourself out for creativity. What I mean by that is that with, you know, whether you take commissions or whether you find your own work or what have you, depending on what kind of art you do, it's extremely difficult for it to be lucrative. And that can take a toll on a person. There will be times in which you will be so busy that you can barely hold it together. And then there will be other times in which you have absolutely nothing and you couldn't get someone to pay for your work to save your life. That part is much harder than being super busy. Um, so in order to have that lull, period, you have to be of extreme uh, you know, discipline because if you're not, you'll easily give up and you'll easily move on to something else. Another thing, nobody else will understand what you're doing. Nobody will understand what kind of artist you are. Nobody will understand the value of your work. And that can be extremely frustrating as well. So for, you know, when you're especially doing commissions, you'll have people that will want way too much. And you'll have people that will have zero ideas and they will rely completely on you. And especially when you're starting out, both of those situations can be super hard to deal with because any sort of business, you need to evolve a great customer base and have, you know, excellent customer service. Even if you're not selling, you know, any sort of other tangible products, your art is a product. It is a product of you. It is a product of hard work, creativity. It's something that most people don't really understand what exactly goes into it. So when you are trying to make money or are trying to land some sort of, uh, you know, big account or a big gig, it's, you know, it's hard. And it's something that not many people can do, which is why, I mean, it's more than just putting something interesting on a piece of paper or on a canvas. It's you needing to pour yourself out, but at the same time, you still need to survive. So, you know, a starving artist nowadays is much easier to find because so many people are producing so many different kinds of art. I mean, nowadays you can call almost anything art. And, you know, while it is an insult to some artists, it's just, it's important to at least first grow interest in, you know, you or the person behind it. Because nobody is going to be like, oh, you know, that thing's cool. I, I, I would like to buy that. If they, they can't find you, they can't hear about you, they can't, you know... Because it's not like you can take just anything to an art show. It's not like you can take just anything out on the street and, and try and hawk it. It doesn't work that way anymore. So many things are important. A great um, social network is, is 
I mean, it's probably the most underestimated part of being an artist nowadays. I mean, I didn't really know what it was like to be an artist in, like, say, Da Vinci's time, because, you know, obviously I'm not immortal or Time Lord. But I, I know what it's like to struggle. And I know what it's like to have the doubt when you can't get the exposure that you need or you can't get the, the excitement behind who you are as an artist or who you are as a person and your work. Like, it's one of the most difficult and frustrating things. And it's something that not many people understand. Like, my family doesn't understand, like, what goes into things. They don't understand how difficult it is to find something and find people to be excited about what you're doing. Because art is not food. It is not a necessity for most people. So it's harder to convince somebody that they like something enough to buy it because, you know, money's tight everywhere. It's not like, you know, a billionaire is going to just happen upon your stuff and, you know, want to invest however much money into it. Like, it takes a lot more legwork than that. So, you know, you need to grow your social networking to a level higher than it's currently at. It doesn't matter if you have 20,000 followers on Twitter. It doesn't matter how many Facebook friends you have. It doesn't matter how many YouTube subscribers you have. You need more. You always need more. Because once somebody's seen something, they've seen it. And then the, whatever captured their imagination to draw them to you in the first place is already gone. So you need to hook other people and hook other people. And those people need to hook other people. And it's, it's hard. It's, it's hard. So, you know, that's the, probably the first thing that you need to understand if you want to get into being an artist is that you will have a difficult time getting people to do the things that in your head they should already be doing. And, you know, it, it can be, like, it can put you in the highest of highs and the deepest depression that you've ever felt. And it can make you hate your own work, and it can make you doubt yourself. And it can drive you insane. I mean, not cut off your own ear insane, but pretty close. So, with that, you need to continuously market yourself. And marketing yourself is really hard because it's hard to do it from a standpoint of marketing a product is one thing, but marketing a person that happens to be yourself can be extremely difficult as well. You have to appeal to the, the widest array of people that you possibly can. Like, you can do, like, niche work, and you can find a good set of people, but you need soccer moms, you need doctors, you need, you know, clergymen, you need everything and everyone. Because if you don't, people will forget about you. And, you know, your closest friends, they're going to get tired of buying shit from you. Like, it happened to me. So it'll happen to you. And it doesn't matter what quality of work you're putting out. As long as you can keep getting people interested in you and what you're doing and who you are as a person, like, you will get back to the busy, you know, I, I can't even keep all my thoughts straight because I'm so busy. Like, you will get back to that time. But you need to put the work into it. It's more than just putting things down on a paper and hoping that somebody will come across your stuff and then you know especially you know people nowadays prey on famous people and when I was trying to get a film funded I preyed on famous people too and I did everything I could and reached out to every single person I could with an idea that I thought was brilliant and that I was you know I could execute if I just had this 
but people don't like to do things for other people all the time. I think out of everyone I reached out to, I might have had 10 to 15 people genuinely want to help me and genuinely like what I was trying to do. And I mean, that's 10 or 15 people out of almost a thousand that I probably had talked to. And, it, you know, that on top of, you know, if you fail at the end of all that, like it's crushing. So you need to bounce back. Like art and artists are more sensitive to, you know, not only their emotions, but the world around them. So when you get dealt like, super crushing blows or you get dealt like you know horrible things your art will suffer i mean there's a saying i don't know exactly how it goes i can paraphrase it but you know tragedy or despair creates good art not always true um sometimes that shit can throw you completely off the deep end and you will drown if you don't keep working like it's more than I, I mean I listen to many podcasts and many uh, you know artists that I've heard talk say that you need to draw on average 10 to 15 hours a day like you need to keep getting better and you need to keep doing more things because the more things that you have the more chance it will appeal to somebody and I, I mean me as a person and as an artist, I always try and do different kinds of things. Though my interests might be in nerd culture, um, you know, occasionally you have to do like some things that you have zero interest in or that will appeal to a broader set of people. Because if you don't, you'll be fucked. And, you know, it, it's, it's all about exposure. The more people that you can get interested, the more exposure that you'll get, and the further you'll go. Now, if you're trying to not do freelance work, which some people would suggest doing that, um, I'm still kind of in between, but if you don't want to do freelance work, and you want to do, and you want to get a job somewhere, whether it's, you know, with a design firm, or whether it's, you know, at some sort of art studio, or as a teacher, or as, you know, anything, that's hard too. You need to make sure, first of all, you, that you understand that location is key. And if you're in Bumblefuck, Indiana, like I am, the opportunity is not swelling. So you need to understand that you're not going to be this huge hotshot person in a town that has 30,000 people in it. It's just not going to happen. If you want to reach bigger than that, you're going to need to go. You're going to need to move. You're going to need to be able to be flexible. There are dream jobs out there that you can work from wherever, but they are the hardest to get because most people live in the middle of nowhere. Like, they need to have jobs too, so they've already scooped those up. So, I mean, if you're going to do things like that, you need to understand that anywhere, that I mean anywhere, in the professional art field, you're going to need at least five years of experience in the professional world. What they expect is you to have interned somewhere for nothing, for a long period of time, and after that, you need to go and get some small, dinky-ass job somewhere. And you need to live off of next to nothing for about another two years before some low-level other business will even look at you. Which sucks. It, I mean, it does. Um, another thing that they look at is your social media impact. Which, you know, people think, why is that important? Well, if you have 5,000 friends on Facebook, or you have, you know, 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, 
you'll be more likely to be hired than somebody that has, well, what my numbers are. Um, because you will be able to create interest in whatever business is interested in you. And they will respond to that very quickly. Um, sometimes that's more important to a business than your experience, how well you did at school, what school you went to. Like sometimes that is, is uh, you know, the shining golden, golden star on your resume. So, you know, Everybody underestimates how important all of those things are. And it's super frustrating. And it's not something that you can talk to a bunch of people about that aren't in the same position because not a whole lot of people will understand or even know. Like, it's not like, oh, well, I'm a nurse or I'm this or I'm that. Being an artist is something that's almost intangible to people. It's something that, you know, oh, okay, you're an artist, but what exactly do you do? And how do you plan to sell it? And how do you plan, like, there's so many more questions that follow after you hear somebody's an artist or after you hear whatever, then, you know, I'm a nurse, I work at a hospital, or I'm a restaurant manager, I work at a restaurant, or, you know, whatever. It's just, it's tough. And oftentimes you'll find yourself in the position where you make just enough money and get just enough exposure to buy more art shit. Like, that's as far as it goes for some people. Which is fine, because art shit is expensive. Like, it's extremely expensive. I mean, the set of markers that professionals would use costs four hundred dollars and the paper for instance that I use costs thirty dollars and I mean you know pencils and once you get through it all I mean it's it's not something it's something that you can't have a hobby in but if you want to take it seriously you're gonna to have to have some deep pockets or at least work your ass off so that you can afford the things that you need to be successful so um, those are kind of all the things that I'm dealing with at the moment. I, I'm kind of caught in between of having my own freelance business and having, you know, to fill out hundreds of applications and drop off hundreds of resumes and send off hundreds of resumes and getting nowhere because there is nothing where I'm located. So you have to fight and you have to, you know, scratch along the ground and crawl and push people over to get where you need to go. Whether it's in either side of the spectrum. Like, you have to be your own number one fan at all times. Because if you're not, you'll give in to the negative thoughts and you'll give in to the negative feelings. And you won't get anywhere or do anything. Um, so that's why, you know, it's just super important to keep working. No matter what you do, just keep working and keep your focus on where you want to go. Um, so with that, that's kind of, you know, how, where I'm at and it's not easy. I mean, after my, uh, film failure, like that was, that was pretty tough and it messed me up for quite a few months. Like I'm just now getting back to my old self. And I mean, sure, you, well, you'll hear people like, oh, quit your bitching, or, you know, there's lots of contrarians in the world, especially on the internet. But you, I mean, you go through so many things, and you need to keep going through those things, otherwise you will get nowhere. So, that's kind of all I have to say for the day. Um, if you like my shirt, which you probably can't see because I'm sitting down, uh... You should have already purchased, because you probably can't get this now, um, this month's Loot Crate. Loot Crate does not sponsor my YouTube channel, but they should. Um, Loot Crate is a service in which you pay $20 a month 
or sometimes less, depending on how much you want to pay uh, or how long you want their service. But you get a box such as this that Giant Batman is sitting on. You get a box filled with pop culture and nerd stuff every month. And it's all surprise, um, unless you get things spoiled on the internet, which I almost always do. But you get all kinds of cool stuff, and it's, uh, you know, the value for what you get is so much more than what you pay. And it's always cool, good stuff. Uh, this month, the theme was Invasion. There's always a different theme. Um, so you always, uh, it's, it's always great. I love it. Uh, if you don't already subscribe to them, you definitely should because it's it's worth it. And you get so many cool things. So if you're not doing it, you should do it. And if you are Loot Crate and you somehow stumble upon this video, you should, you know. Just saying. I can be your spokes guy. So after all that and my uh, shameless plugging of myself, um, I will let all of you go. I'm sure that this video is going to take forever to upload because it's probably going on 20 minutes now. But thanks for watching, and next time, now that I have a viable tripod that my camera is sitting on, um, I will post art. So please don't forget to like the videos, don't forget to share them on Facebook or Twitter, um, don't forget to subscribe if you already haven't. Um, the more subscribers I get, the more uh, success that I have. So please, please, please continue to do that. Thank you to the 13 that I already have. Um, I love you all. Have a good day. And until next time, as you can tell, much like the $6 million man, um, you know, I have made these videos better. I have some of the technology.